Hey guys, uh, here's a quick little update on my TDAC project. I haven't made just a whole lot of progress on the grips, but I have started some of the filling and sanding. Uh, it's going pretty well. I just, I really hate doing it. It's not my most favorite thing to do. So uh, we had a cold spell, so I wasn't able to, to do much painting. And then I was out of the country for uh, about 10 days. So progress is, is slow on the grips. Uh, but it is coming along. The, the sanding and filling is, is making a much nicer finish, much smoother. Uh, feels much better in the hand. So uh, in the end, it'll be worth it. I did get the uh, left side grip all printed and, and ready to go. So um, it'll be next as far as the filling and sanding. I started on the face here and then realized that it lifted up on me a little bit, uh, the print here. So I'm going to have to uh, reprint this face and, and start over on it. So I have made some progress on the, the main part of the, the TDAC, the screen and the bezel with all the buttons on there. So I did get the screen in. Um, it is just kind of a, one of those $30 Chinese LCD screens. Uh, nothing super fancy. Um, I wish I had something with a little bit higher resolution, but you know, just looking around anything with a better resolution is considerably more expensive. So I think I'm just gonna stick with, uh, stick with this guy here. Uh, so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't too much of a pain to get it all installed, but it did fight me a little bit. Uh, there you can see the, the buttons kind of on the top there. That's really kind of where most of the issues came through. So let me power this guy off and I'll show you guys the inside. I don't have it all bolted together yet. Uh, the other kind of strange thing is this bezel that kind of holds the screen in is missing uh, this part on the edge here. So I'm probably gonna have to see if I can't design something to fill that out. If not, there's just going to be a, you're going to be able to see the screen and sticking out the side. So here's the inside. Uh, the design was fairly well done. You know, there's a mounts for the circuit board here to hold it in the right spot. Uh, the buttons here at the top did fight me a little bit. Um, it looks like there was the, the PCB that has the buttons mounted to it was just kind of press fitted in there. And um, it did, it, it did, it was a pain to get lined up. I ended up drilling some holes and uh, I think you can, if you can see in there, I had to drill out a piece of it or cut a slit in there where the little uh, contacts from the PCB board stuck out. Um, and then I ended up drilling a couple of holes in it. Uh, there were some holes in the PCB and I used those screws there to, to kind of mount that in there and got it all lined up and the buttons work uh, just fine now. So again, it, it was a bit of a pain to get all that in there and, and set up there. You can see the, the bottom side with the power supply and the HDMI output, uh, but I was able to get it uh, all installed and working. I've also the last couple of days, I've got all of the buttons wired in for the uh, bezel. So you can see here, we've got the just the press the push buttons then we got a couple of potentiometers and then i went ahead and used an encoder here for the on off uh, switch originally i was going to use uh an arduino controller and uh, i was going to oh, have a three-way an actual three-way position switch here on order um, but when i started the wiring uh, with the button matrix with the arduinos it was just too much trouble to kind of get the uh, you know, jumper all the wires. Basically, you got to have two wires on each contact just about. So I kind of gave up on that. I have an extra Leo Bodner uh, board, this guy right here. I'm going to end up using it instead. Uh, so I went ahead and got all the wiring hooked up here. Uh, there's four places um, in the unit where the wires can go through. So I've got those wires kind of bundled up. I need to run through, do a final check, make sure all the buttons still work. Um, I did kind of see I squirted some hot glue on top of each one of these contacts. Uh, just for some strain relief. Um, took apart a wind wing controller to replace a hat switch and noticed they had done it. It's kind of where I got the idea from. And as small and, and flimsy as these wires and these contacts were, I just knew moving this stuff around was would probably pull those things loose. And as much wiring in a small space as there is on this thing, um, you know, I didn't want to risk having a contact break, you know, while I was putting this thing together. So we'll show you the switches we used here. Uh, these are the kind of tack switches. It's just a small little push button uh, contact here. I did figure out that there is an open side and a closed side. And so this basically allows um, 
relates to uh, the, the momentary or the normally open and the normally closed circuits. Uh, so you'll use the two contacts uh, on this side would be the normally closed. If you use the two contacts on this side would be the normally open. Um, I also found these uh, small potentiometers. Uh, they worked very well. I'm assuming it's what the original designer had intended to use because this square was the same cutout as uh, what's in there. So the, the ones I normally use are kind of around, a little bit bigger. They wouldn't fit in there, so I had to find these. Uh, and then I wanted to also show you guys kind of the, the way these buttons mount. Uh, it's pretty ingenious, actually. There is a this little panel here. Uh, it's got this little kind of stopper on the back, and then these switches just kind of push in um, from the top and stay in there that way and then this whole thing screws into the into the bezel to hold it still so uh this was one that i started and broke these two little i don't know what happened to this one this one looks like it's still okay but i printed some new oh yeah it's over here these two over here uh the little supports broke so i had to reprint it but you can kind of see here kind of where those screws are in uh, that's what holds uh, those little panels that hold the buttons uh, it was much easier to solder those, the wires on the switches before you screw those little brackets uh, into the frame there. Uh, that was uh, much easier for me than trying to solder in here. And you can see I got some iron burns, a couple of the, the plastic from trying to do it in there. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now. So uh, next step will be to get all this buttoned up and... Uh, together wired up. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just mount this uh, Well, in a, I I think the original design had intended for the wiring to all be done underneath there and I just I think there's too much stuff in there and It's gonna get to be a giant disaster. And so I think what I'm gonna do is mount this Leo board to the back And then I'll have the wires come completely out. I drilled holes all the way through here uh, we'll have the wiring come out and connect to this board and it'll be just kind of permanently mounted on here. And I'm going to have to come up with some sort of a design to uh, mount this whole contraption to and something to mount the grips to. So um, I'll talk about that in another video, but just wanted to give you guys a quick little update. That's where I'm at. And hopefully we're kind of, I feel like I'm about halfway through. So uh, got some more wiring and, and the, the grip wiring is going to be a bit of a pain. Uh, I am going to use Arduinos for those and I have a feeling there's going to be some times where you're going to want multiple buttons pressed at the same time. So that's going to make uh, diodes uh, necessary on the inside of the controls on the grip. So it's going to be a little bit of a challenge doing the wiring there. But uh, looking forward to get it completed. I'm enjoying the Apache. It's a whole lot of fun to fly. Uh, this is definitely going to make uh, the front seat be a lot more immersive. It's There's a lot of controls on those TDAC grips, and especially once the fire control radar comes out, I think it will uh, make a huge difference. But it is a little odd using, you know, a standard HOTAS to try to control some of that stuff. So that's where we're at. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying it, and we'll catch you next time.